Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gramancing. The St. Croix District Board of Elections held a special board meeting Friday to distribute copies of a federal audit the chairman received and discuss how they would respond. The board members present went into executive session but couldn't take any action when they returned to the meeting because of a lack of a quorum. News 2's Erica Parsons has more. The Board of Elections has until September 16th to respond to a federal audit. The U.S. Inspector General under the Department of Interior conducted a review of the VI's election system from 2003 to 2013. The report, Election System of the Virgin Islands Compliance with the Help America Vote Act of 2002, or HAVA, is dated August 2013. It was conducted on behalf of the U.S. Election Assistance Commission. The report is uh, about 16 pages with specific recommendations and findings that will be addressed at the appropriate time in the exit conference after the 16th of September. Only three St. Croix District Board members were present for Friday's special meeting call just to address the report. Absent were Lisa Harris-Moorhead and Raymond Williams. Both Roland Molinar and Rupert Ross Jr. were also absent but excused. Chairman Adelbert Bryan reported out of executive session. Since the re request that came to my office or to me as the chairman, we're going to decide among ourselves when there's a quorum present as to how we're going to proceed. We need to be sure that we answer to the best of our ability with the information we have access to. And maybe if we can talk to other individuals that were not involved here today and those that were here before, I don't have those uh, concerns that they're asking. I'm sure other members don't have the concern that I would respect. No details were made public from the report since it hasn't been officially released. The Inspector General's office requested an exit conference to discuss the contents of the report. If no response is received from the VI by the deadline, the report will be published as is. Erica Parsons, News 2. Joint Board Elections Chair Alicia Wells and St. Thomas St. John District Chair Arturo Watlington Jr. also received copies of the letter and audit. The next St. Croix District meeting will be held Wednesday, September 4th at 9.30 at Sunny Isle office. The Department of Education informs parents and students in the St. Croix District that negotiations with Abramson Enterprise Inc., provider of school bus services in St. Croix, have stalled. Abramson cannot provide school bus service to St. Croix students until it reaches an agreement with the Department of Education. At this point and until further notice, parents and guardians are asked to help transport their children to and from school and to provide carpool assistance to those who may not have alternatives. The Department of Education will provide regular updates to parents, guardians and students with regards to school bus transportation. Well, yesterday at Francis Metal on St. Croix, a joint task force discovered manhole covers along with other equipment that were stolen from the innovative company. A press conference was held today to update the community. And News Shanika Robinson has that story. Yesterday, a joint task force operation team recovered stolen scrap metal and detained the owner of Francis Metal in Estate Cottage. Today, the police department hosted a conference to update the community of their recent findings. In total, we gave five citations yesterday, two to Carino's Trucking and Water, uh, and three to Francis Metal. Um, based on our findings of utilities and government items that were found on his property, his permit was suspending, pending an internal investigation from our agency. As officers searched Francis Metal, they found several questionable items as well as half a dozen shaved down manhole covers that were identified as property of the Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority. A representative from the innovative company also identified some of the equipment as well. We were able to effect an arrest and one Eduardo, um, Francisco Eduardo, turned out to be the owner of the business. Uh, he was charged with um, buying and receiving stolen property and also conversion of government property. The owner of Francis Metal says he was unaware that he was purchasing stolen property. I don't know, I think the police are confusing because I told the police I know the guy, I have the camera, I have everything. Now I had a receipt for the other mess that police sent me to for the government. It's not me. I have somebody selling for me, the man for the company. The police commissioner sent a message to the entire Virgin Islands community during his final statement at the conference. Companies, businesses, if you're buying stolen property, we're going to be knocking on your door. 
This is a warning. And if you're caught buying stolen property or you're caught in violation of the law in any way, it's going to be our recommendation to suspend your license or take it and revoke it completely. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. Be sure to come on News 2 to keep you updated. Traffic officers on St. Thomas are investigating an accident involving a vehicle and a motorcycle that occurred around 9 a.m. on August 29th. Preliminary reports indicate a black Acura was making a right turn onto Alton Adams Drive from Perimeter Road. At the same time, a red, red Kawasaki motorcycle was traveling eastward on Alton Adams Drive. As the Acura was completing its turn, the motorcycle collided with the Acura. The male motorcycle driver was injured and was transported to the Schneider Hospital for treatment. The case is under active investigation. Well, in Thursday's newscast, VI Fire officials provided an update on the house fire earlier this week in Montbijou. Officials say some of the preliminary information released wasn't accurate. St. Croix Deputy Fire Chief Corey Kent received misinformation from the inspector, saying that electrical was ruled out as a possible cause of the fire. That's not the case, and they say the investigation is still ongoing. Meanwhile, St. Croix police urge motorists to drive cautiously. Another pedestrian was struck by a car and injured in the Estate Lorraine area about 11 a.m. on August 26. Police said a 77-year-old woman was crossing Queen Mary Highway in the vicinity of the bus shanty when she was struck by a vehicle driven by a 72-year-old woman. The driver remained on the scene and spoke to officers. No arrests were made at the time of the accident. This case is also under active investigation. We'll turn in our attention overseas. The Obama administration continues to weigh a military strike against Syria. After a national security meeting today, State Secretary John Kerry lays out declassified evidence implicating the Syrian government in a chemical weapons attack against its own citizens. Here's Danielle Nottingham from the White House with details. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived at the White House for a National Security Council meeting weighing a possible military strike against Syria. In a 90-minute briefing last night, President Obama's national security team told congressional leaders there's no doubt Syria used poison gas to kill hundreds of civilians. We know where the rockets were launched from and at what time. We know where they landed and when. We know rockets came only from regime-controlled areas. Since the suspected chemical attack in the suburbs of Damascus last week, the Obama administration has been building the case Syrian President Bashar Assad should be punished with a military strike. Last night, America's closest ally, Britain, said no to military action. While the White House had hoped for Britain's participation, advisors say the president is prepared for the possibility of going it alone. France did say today it would go ahead with plans to strike Syria. Some lawmakers from both parties are not convinced the U.S. should take military action. There are problems if we take action. There are problems if we don't take action. President Obama has said any U.S. military intervention in Syria would be limited and tailored. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, the White House. And keeping our eye on the economy, disappointing news from the Commerce Department shows Americans' income and spending barely rose in July. Both increased only a tenth of a percent. The numbers indicate economic growth is off to a slow start this quarter. The news sent stocks lower. The Dow closed down 30 points. The Nasdaq also sank 30. Apple has launched the iPhone Reuse and Recycle program, giving users the chance to trade in their old phones for a discount on the iPhone 5. Customers will sign a new contract at an Apple retail store to receive the discount, which total, totals up to $280. The recycling program has already come under fire, as third-party companies often give a much steeper discount for an iPhone trading. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market. Watch everything down. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P, Dow 30, Nasdaq 30, S&P 5. Coming up on News 2, September 3rd is the day for the VI Fathers March. According to a proclamation by Governor DeYoung, fathers and father figures are invited to come out and accompany their children to school beginning on the first day. We'll be right back. September 3rd is the day for the VI Fathers March. According to a proclamation by Governor DeYoung, Fathers and father figures are invited to come out and 
accompany their children to school beginning on the first day. Many VI fathers have already signed the pledge that details the things they promise to do to become better fathers. August 31st and September 1st were also proclaimed the back to school days of prayer when clergy are asked to pray for students returning to school here and abroad. Studies have shown that children whose fathers and parents in general assist them with school, who are involved in their education, do better in school, they do better in life, they're more productive adults. Fathers, go back to school with your kids on the first day. Don't underemphasize how important that is. Well, another Virgin Islander will be heading off to Miss World. Petra Cabrera was chosen as Miss U.S. Paradise in March, and she's leaving Sunday to represent the Virgin Islands in the Miss World pageant. It will be held September 28th in Jakarta, Indonesia, where Petra will be there for the entire month. The contestants have to do a charity project in their community, and for my charity project, I choose to um, work with, to build up low self-esteem and young ladies. I'm looking forward to represent the territory well, give 100% of myself, and um, you know, to bring a piece of paradise to Indonesia. Congratulations to you, Petra, and all the best. Well, preparations for the first ever AgriFest Mini Harvest Festival were underway on Friday. The one-day fair will be held Monday, Labor Day, from 9 to 6, with fun for the entire family. Every year we get um, inquiries. You guys need to do the Ag Fair twice a year. We decided to call it the AgriFest Mini Harvest Festival. Summer's last fling, the day before public school starts, so we can get one more day of family fun and entertainment in. We've got expected nearly 100 vehicles coming in just for the show, and I can't even count how many dogs people have told me they're bringing in. So it's an all-breed dog show, should be a lot of fun. Um, and there will, there will be prizes given with the car show. It's going to be, you're the judges. We have the 4-H program that's going to have the youth activities. We have bouncers, we have vendors, we have um, people who will be selling our local foods, our farmers, our arts and craft vendors, um, entertainment. We have DJ Swain kicking the morning off, ending up with cool sessions. Uh, for five bucks, you can't miss this. Well, taking a stand against crime and violence in the VI, that is the theme for the VI Peace Concert happening this Saturday on the 31st at the Austin Bay Monsanto Marine Terminal in Crown Bay, St. Thomas. The Adelita Cancran Junior High will kick off the concert with a parade at 12 noon. There will be free blood pressure and blood sugar screenings, free HIV testing. There will also be entertainment, poetry readings, and much more. Yes, Virgin Islands people, this is the first annual VI Peace Concert presented to you by Bus Pipe Records and Red Lion Sounds. You know, um, we have a lot of statistics in our, in our community and if we can bring more awareness to our community, it will help and show the youths an avenue where they can now do different things. You know, we have artists coming from St. Croix, St. John, Tortola, right here on St. Thomas, and even artists coming from Miami, Jamaica. You know, this, this show here is something that I'm really looking forward to because the people need something like this, you know, where they can come and hear conscious music, positive music, whether it be word, sound, from poetry, guest speaking, you know, steel pan playing, marching band, you know, different talents, modeling, whatever your talent may be, this will be one of the avenues for our people to express themselves in a positive way and shine a light on the positive that we have in our community, the VI Peace Concert, August 31st, 2013, down at Crown Bay. All right? This is going to be the event of the year, something you definitely do not want to miss. And guess what? It's free. And that is going to be an awesome event. Well, like we do every Friday, we bring you some adorable critters featured as our pet of the week. This week, we have two very friendly puppies, Zephyr and Jules. 
These two lookalikes can go from friendly and bouncy when you put them on the ground to calm and content when you hold them in your arms. If you're interested in either Zephyr or Jules or both, or if you just want to volunteer or provide foster homes, you can call the Humane Society at 775-0599 or you can visit their website at www.hsstt.com. Today we have uh, Zephyr and Jules. They are at the Humane Society right now. We have a lot of puppies right now. Um, these two are two months old, very adorable. And um, if anybody has the opportunity to uh, foster a dog, we need 28 foster homes for our puppies right now. And we have a ton of kittens too, so we really need your help if you can help out at all. And as always, if you need help spay or neutering your pets, please come down. Let us know. We will try to help you out the best we can. Thank you very much. And they were so cute. Be sure to stick around. Your new Sue AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. <laughs>